Oh, oh no, oh no! Oh, I feel a lot better. I didn't touch anything, I swear! Oh, Ty, what did you do? It wasn't my fault! So on this edition of Breaking the Internet, I did see a meme the other day that asked an interesting question. And one of the reasons that I enjoy reading other ideas, the reason that I follow people that are socialist, communist, that kind of thing, people that, that see the world differently than me, is because what's so fascinating is they occasionally say something that is profoundly true and either don't realize what they're saying or do realize what they're saying but don't apply it correctly. And this is one of those cases. So th this is a meme that went viral the other day. There were a whole bunch of people. Some of my buddies on the left were sharing this over and over again. Anyway, it says, Nobody learns communism from a book. We're born communist and then get indoctrinated into capitalism. Don't believe me? Go and ask a seven-year-old if we should give homeless people houses, hungry people food, and sick people medicine. Theory later just helps us unlearn the... And you can guess what the rest of that is. So a couple things that I wanted to bring up on this. First of all, I think it's actually absolutely correct. I think virtually everybody is born fairly liberal. There might be a handful of exceptions. You might be able to find a five-year-old that just can quote Adam Smith, <laughs> but as a general rule, when you're looking at kids, you're usually looking at people that if you gave them a list of policy proposals without any prodding or without trying to teach them anything, they probably would just go ahead and default to the more liberal position. Okay, well, this policy would give food to hungry people. Yeah, I'd, I'd go off with that. Uh, I'd, I'd give homes to... Ha ha wow, I can't talk today. I would give homes to homeless people. Okay, I'd, I'd go along with that. That sounds good. Here's the thing that's so funny about that, though. I did the same thing. If you were to ask third grade Caleb, who was eight years old at the time, because there was an election going on, and that election was taking place between William Clinton and Herbert Walker Bush, do you know who Caleb voted for in our little pretend third grade election? I voted for Bill Clinton. And the reason that I did is because when I looked at the policies and with my simplistic eight-year-old mind, I thought that Bill Clinton's proposal sounded better. He's saying, let's increase the welfare state. Let's just give things to people that are less fortunate. I was like, well, that sounds like the nicer thing to do. So yeah, I'll, I'll go with that guy. Because eight-year-old Caleb didn't understand that we were living in a world with finite resources where someone has to pay for those things. See, that's generally the difference in a child and an adult. When you're an adult, you look at things more realistically. You understand that there are certain things. So the one thing that I think is incorrect in that tweet is that it's some kind of indoctrination. The idea that there, and, and I have people even in my own family that subscribe to this, that somehow the only reason people believe in capitalism is because they were brainwashed into it, which also doesn't make any sense because how would we have ever got capitalism in the first place? If it takes some kind of giant media conspiracy to trick people into doing this, then how did the first capitalist ever come about? That doesn't, that doesn't make any sense. By the way, I don't believe that communism does that either. I think that there is a very strong, very well thought out process through the education system that has taken place over a number of years where socialists have taken over pretty much every position in power in education, which is why I find it hilarious that he's saying that people have to be indoctrinated to be capitalist. But the point is, it's maturity, not indoctrination, that winds up changing us. You see, as children, we're incredibly selfish. And it seems like the younger we are, the more selfish we are. Your one-year-old baby doesn't care that you just worked a double shift. He's hungry. He's going to cry and keep you up. The thought never enters his head, okay, I've, I've got to calm down because mom's had a rough day. Like That's not a thing that he thinks about. And there's nothing wrong with that. He's a one-year-old. That's what he's supposed to do. But what's funny is that they almost think that that's the mindset that we ought to keep throughout our entire lives. Little kids are very selfish. They don't think about other people. That's why you have to teach them to be considerate. That's why you have to teach them to share their toys. That's why you have to teach them 
to do virtually every good thing that they do because, as kids, they're only thinking about themselves. And that's exactly what a socialist would do. They think about things from their perspective. Well, if something happens that is unfortunate for me, I'd rather somebody else take care of me. And by the way, the interesting thing about this, and the same thing that happened to me when I was voting for Bill Clinton in our little mock election when I was a third grader, is that I was thinking about it from the perspective of, yeah, somebody else should take care of those people. That's exactly what a socialist thinks. That's why little kids, I think this guy is right, primarily are socialist. They're like, yeah, they're, they're people that need things out there. Well, somebody else should go and take care of them. The little kid's not thinking of it from the perspective that I should go and take care of them, and that's exactly what your socialists tend to do. That's why people like AOC can say, no, no, you, you just pay for it. Well, how do you pay for it? No, no, you, you don't like actually earn the money and then decide what to do with it. You just pay for it. You just do it. That's the kind of thing that socialists are operating under. They live in a fantasy world where they think that when they give out things to people, those things don't cost somebody else. They really do believe in the concept of a free lunch, which is something only a child would believe in. But this is something that has been shown throughout all of, of human history. This has been done in, in studies in other countries, in the UK, in other European countries, when they look at political leanings. The younger you are, the more liberal you tend to be. Maturity, not indoctrination, generally causes people to become more conservative. A study that was done by the University of Chicago, this is the abstract of that study, where they say, In contrast to previous research, however, we also find support for folk wisdom. On those occasions when political attitudes do shift across the lifespan, liberals are more likely to become conservatives than conservatives are to become liberals, suggesting that folk wisdom has some empirical basis even as it overstates the degree of change. Now, this is a fair-handed analysis. If you're under 30 and you're not a liberal, you have no heart, and if you're over 30 and not a conservative, you have no brain, something to that effect. That's been repeated by many, many different famous people the reason that is the folk wisdom that is being talked about in that Chicago study, it actually does bear out. Now, that doesn't mean that every single person over 30 is a conservative and every single one under 30 is a liberal. That's simply not realistic. And that's what it means by overstating that in the folk wisdom. But what it is suggesting is, yeah, there's some truth to it. Typically, if you do make a change over time in your lifespan, you don't become more liberal as you get older, you become more conservative. Obviously, there are exceptions to the rule, but generally speaking, that is the trend that we see. That was also backed up by a study that was done by Pew Research. So if we can bring that up, you'll see that this is where they broke down what they called political typologies, which, by the way, there's a lot of fascinating stuff in the study that they did, but we're going to look at it for the purposes of determining whether people age into becoming more conservative. What I want you to notice is you're looking at it broken up by age group, and you'll notice as you get older, you'll not only notice that the trending conservative groups, steadfast conservatives, business conservatives, and young outsiders that they don't only expand, but they expand in certain very specific ways. And you'll notice that on the blue side, those categories tend to contract with the exception of one. Which one actually gets bigger, a typology that trends left? Faith and family left. Now, if you're looking at the comparison of younger versus older on the conservative-leaning typologies, you'll notice the ones that increase are steadfast conservatives, which are virtually nobody in the 18 to 29 age. I, I would have been one of the rare exceptions on that one. And business conservatives also expand. Young outsiders tend to decrease. Now, that makes sense because they actually have young in their name. So what does this suggest? This suggests that as you age, you are more likely to get involved in the business world and look at things from a mature standpoint. In other words, you're looking at it from a number standpoint and a pragmatic standpoint. Steadfast conservatives, that means you're an ideologic conservative. In other words, you understand the ideology of those in conservative positions, those in the right, and you tend to, to go into that one. And then another thing, the faith and family left, even though it's one that trends blue, it's the only segment of the left 
that actually expands. Which would suggest what? There are three things that become more important to your political leanings as you age. Your ideology, in other words, understanding politics and how it works. You get involved in some kind of business, whether it's your job, whether you're a business owner. And then the third one would be faith. Well, that's pretty interesting because those are typically the reasons that people do become more conservative as they age out their business, their faith, and their understanding of the conservative ideal as a whole. Their understanding, their wisdom increases, and thus they become more conservative than they were in their youth. See, that's fascinating because it coincides directly with our synopsis, our, our thesis here, of what we're looking at, that it is indeed maturity not some kind of indoctrination that causes younger people to be socialists. We're basically all born with a more communist socialist mindset and then age on to live in the real world and change our beliefs, understanding that many of our childish beliefs were not accurate or were not realistic. It does go back to a worldview issue. I think this whole thing goes back to a worldview issue, which is essentially, and I believe this wholeheartedly, that the vast majority of people on the left are on the left because they believe that people are generally good. I mean, think about this. We'll use an extreme example here to illustrate the point, but let's look at guns. The reason that they want to get rid of guns is because they believe that generally people are good, and if you tell people not to have guns, they won't have them. That's the only way any person could believe that telling a bad guy he's not allowed to have a gun that he won't get a gun. It's an idealistic and childish way to look at the world. The reason that socialism always fails, I mean, how many times have you heard this from people on the left and the right, that socialism is perfect until you get people involved? Now, they'll claim that if you get the right people involved, it'll actually work this time, which is stupid on a number of levels, but the point is, the point is, that they genuinely do believe that human nature is generally good, and if you just give equal things to people, that they'll all be equally virtuous. That the only reason there are bad people is because society somehow made them bad. Society somehow corrupted them. The system that we have is what corrupted them. The whole idea of America was based on the opposite idea. Basically, we assumed that people are awful, and people can become corrupt, and their default is to be evil, and they must be educated and trained and become good, which, by the way, is the Christian worldview, that because people are generally evil and because it is so easy to corrupt them, that what we must do is we must make government as limited as humanly possible to prevent people from exercising that corruption in a way that harms another person. Doesn't work perfectly, and even with the limited amount of government power even our original government had, there were still abuses. It's by no means a perfect system. But the point is, one system basically assumes on everyone being altruistic and everybody, if you just give them all the same stuff, everybody has the equal amount of income, they have the same house, they have the same car, they'll all basically just be good and live in a utopia. The conservative, or in this case, the American idea, the way that our government was founded, it was upon the idea that people are generally bad. And because of that, nobody can be trusted with that level of influence and power. And humans can't make a perfect world because we're humans and we suck. That's basically the whole idea behind our government. Without going into too much detail, that's the reason why we have three branches of government in the United States. This is stated over and over again in the Federalist Papers and by the founders themselves. They believed that the only way to keep government power in check and to keep it from growing, granted it's grown a lot and, and way beyond the scope of what they ever imagined, but they believe the only way to keep government from growing is to separate the powers so that they would all jealously guard their own power. In other words, our system actually uses the jealousy of human beings against one another. It assumes that Congress is going to be jealous and won't want to relinquish its power to our judges or to our president. Therefore... They would want to keep all of their own power. And the same would be true of the president, and the same would be true of the Supreme Court. And because of that, they would all be jealously guarding their own power, a bad trait <laughs> that actually keeps them 
from gaining power in the others. Because if the president tries to gain power, the Supreme Court or the Congress say, uh, no, 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 you can't do that. That's one of our powers. That's the stopgap that our founders put in place. That's the difference in worldview here. Generally speaking, the reason that most children are socialists, the, the reason that most children would lean socialists, and if you ask them a bunch of questions, they'd sound a lot more like AOC than they would Rand Paul, is because kids also naively believe that people are basically good, that people are basically trustworthy, and that the average person, even if you gave him the same amount of money, whether he did a lot of work or very little work, that he would work just as hard, that's a naive, childish way of looking at things. Adults understand you have to go out, you have to work, you have to do things, and you need some kind of motivation to do that because we kind of figure that if we were getting paid the same for working or not working, we'd choose to not work. See, the thing about liberals are they, they basically want to stay kids their whole life. That's why President Obama thinks that you should be able to stay on your parents' insurance until you're 26. That's just the way that liberals are. They, want to, they have a Peter Pan complex. They want to live in a perpetual state of adolescence, and it's not good. That's the reason they want to go to college and then to graduate school and basically stay in their teenage years up until the point that they're in their mid to late 20s. Instead of getting out in the real world and actually being productive, they'd rather prolong that as much as possible. You see, liberals would rather cloak themselves in the mantle of ignorance and live in childish bliss then they would formulate ideas that work in the real world. That's the difference in the worldview of a conservative and a liberal, and that's why younger people tend to be more liberal and older people tend to be more conservative. So now they have this fancy new technology where you click on one of these boxes and it takes you to another one of my videos. Hopefully it works a lot better than the Obamacare website or the DNC's Iowa caucus app. Gotta love that big government central planning.